All right, hello, welcome back everybody. PayPal and Patreon are down below if you want to support me, only do so if you actually can. And apologies for any audio glitches, my mic is starting to fail after eight years and I probably won't be able to get another one for a little while. So, Lake Mead and Lake Fowl, the two large reservoirs along the Colorado River, for the most part, they are excess storage reservoirs who release water to flow along the Colorado River to maintain its flow whenever it otherwise wouldn't be adequate. And over the course of the 21st century so far, that has been, for the most part, all the time, which is why they have decreased in water level net-wise. So having some years where they stall or where they regain net water level this year, looking like it's going to be one of those, you can see they have regained some bit, uh, Lake Powell much more than Lake Mead. And the particular reason for this is, and the reason for the differential between the two, is snowmelt as there was a huge amount of snowfall in the Rockies region over the course of this past winter. That snow is, of course, now melting, or has been melting for quite a number of weeks, which inevitably come down into the Colorado River and gather in Lake Powell and Lake Mead, much more so in the case of Lake Powell, as you can see with the difference between the two in just how much more water Lake Powell has regained and how quickly it's regained it, primarily coming from the fact that, as you can see it labeled on the map, it is higher up a stream along the Colorado River. It's actually up in the Rockies, or at least in the lower portion of them. So it's Lake Powell that's primarily receiving the bulk of the snow melt, as most of the snow-covered mountains are the ones up further along the river than Lake Powell, whereas the water level rising in Lake Mead is primarily from additional water flowing down the river being released from Lake Powell because Lake Powell is receiving so much from the snow melt. Now, before this, Lake Mead was down to around 1,046 elevation feet. The U.S. lake system is measured in elevation feet, which is the height of the water surface above sea level. It's not the actual depth of the lake. 1,046 elevation feet was actually down to only being about 27% full for Lake Mead. Because, remember, these aren't, you know, rectangular swimming pools. These are flooded canyons, so they get drastically narrower the further down you go. So Lake Mead has risen up about seven elevation feet or so, and that's brought it up from 1,046 elevation feet to getting towards 1,053, which has restored it from 27 up to a bit short of 29% full. So last year's loss was from up around the upper 1,060s down to around 1,040. And with the snow melt combined with Lake Mead's usual replenishment period later in the year, Lake Mead might be able to recover up to that point, thus making this year, as I said earlier, a stall year. Whereas for the most part, since we've rolled into the 21st century, it has lost net water level every year. Lake Powell, meanwhile, further upriver, was down to under 3,520 elevation feet, with its turbine intakes for power generation only being about 20 feet further, down between 3,490 and 3,500. So Lake Powell was actually getting close to having to shut down power generation, and it had already looked like it was probably going to be able to avoid that for this year. And now because of this, it is definitely going to be able to avoid it for this year. Lake Powell having gone from 3,520 elevation feet back up now to 3,546, representing a regain of around 7 or 8% of water level from about 21% full back up to 28% full. The particular steepness and volume in Lake Powell's case, again, as I said, coming from the fact that it's the lake that's higher up along the river, actually in the Rockies, or at least in the lower portion of them. And also this is starting to stack time-wise with Lake Powell's normal replenishment phase anyways. Uh, that's where the two of them stand for the moment. So we'll see whether after this year they resume the prior trends, but one way or another, that's it for this one. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. Or you can watch or listen to any of the other hundreds of episodes I have about all kinds of stuff. Or subscribe to my catch channel as well. And no matter what happens to me, may God bless and protect all of you. And I will see you all around next time.